Bye bye. When it comes to parenting, you're a pro. You know your kid doesn't step around puddles. <laughs> and you know cheap leaky diapers are an amateur move. You need Love's Pro Level Leak Protection. Love's. Parent like a pro. Happening now. A search for survivors after a barge hits an oil refinery pipeline in the port of Corpus Christi. We're tracking the newest developments. Texans to receive an additional $300 in unemployment benefits per week. Who qualifies? Moving in on campus looks a little different this year at UTSA. I'm Devin Clark. Coming up, we'll tell you about the staggered approach that officials are taking to make sure that students social distance. The Biden-Harris campaign officially underway. The Republican National Convention still in the works. I'm Nadia Romero at the White House with the details. And we have some rain chances to talk about for the weekend, but more importantly, activity in the tropics. We could have two hurricanes in the Gulf of Mexico at the same time next week. An update coming right up. One of many honors this week, a sky high commemoration of the 100th anniversary of the women's right to vote. The news at five starts right now. First at five, a fiery explosion ignited in the port of Corpus Christi this morning, sending six people to the hospital. Right now, the U.S. Coast Guard is searching for four other crew members who were on board the dredging vessel Wayman L. Boyd. The explosion happened around eight this morning after the vessel hit a submerged natural gas pipeline. We will continue following the story and we'll provide updates on air and online at KSAT.com as new information comes in. An Amber Alert issued for a 14-month-old child, Clay Guzman. He was last seen in Colorado City, Texas, which is northwest of Midland. The Colorado City Police Department also looking for the person on your right. It is 28-year-old Matthew Guzman. He's believed to be driving a 2014 white Chevy Silverado with a Texas license plate number of HKB. 4110. If you have any information, you can call the Colorado City Police Department at 325 728 5294. Meanwhile, the Bear County Sheriff's Office is looking for 17 year old Isabel Ann Serta. She was last seen August 13th at a home in the 9800 block of Connemara, Bend in northwest Bear County. She is about five foot two inches tall, weighs 118 pounds, and has brown hair and brown, uh, brown eyes and black hair. If you have any information, call the Sheriff's Office at 210-335-6000. You can also email missingpersons at bear.org. It's a different experience for students moving on to UTSA's campus this year. Safety measures are being taken to ensure social distancing protocols are being met in an effort to stop the spread of COVID-19. Yeah, Devin Clark spoke to some students and parents who say they're both excited and a bit nervous about the upcoming school year. This whole thing's new to me, but I'm excited. I'm ready. This year, students moving on to UTSA's campus are experiencing a different process. Honestly, I thought it was going to be packed. Instead of a move-in date, UTSA chose to go with a move-in time period. It started August 10th, and it extends until August 23rd. This way, students can take a staggered approach and social distance as much as possible. Student move-ins are now by appointment only, and no more than two people are allowed to help. There's also an option to have belongings shipped to a student's dorm room. Incoming freshmen just Sal Salas, who moved in on Monday, was pleasantly surprised by the safety measures put in place. I don't think like we encountered like any pupil throughout the entire process and um, they gave us bins and they've been cleaning them out. So it's actually been really good. But the semester is just getting started and there is concern about parties and students getting lax with social distancing guidelines as they settle into campus life. It's on the mind of incoming freshman Jared Gibson, who moved in today and is taking most of his classes online. Uh, no one's really like had to deal with this before. So, you know, it's just it's new for everyone. Everybody. So I'm hoping that, you know, it can be handled like, appropriately and keep everybody safe. In a time like this, it's kind of scary, you know, but I think he's a, a smart kid. He can do what's right. Meanwhile, UTSA officials are taking other steps to limit student to student contact by holding many campus events like meet and greets virtually instead of in person. When we're thinking about these virtual events, we want to engage with our students as much as possible and identify ways for them to make connections with other students. An effort to make sure students get the real Roadrunner experience while staying safe. At UTSA, Devin Clark, KSAT 12 News. A 65-year-old woman shot in the arm after a bullet broke through her second floor apartment window this afternoon. It happened in the 1600 block of Lamar over on the east side. 
San Antonio police say the woman called for help herself. She was taken to the hospital and is expected to be OK. It's unclear where the shot was fired from, but police are investigating. A balloon release held this afternoon for Gideon Baradeau on what would have been his third birthday. The two year old died at the hospital on August 9th from a brain bleed. A source familiar with the criminal investigation confirms he was injured while his mother visited her boyfriend on August 6th. At last check, Kerrville police were questioning multiple people, but no arrests have been made. Honoring a hero, a procession held this morning for Converse Fire Captain Bryant Anderson, who recently lost his battle with COVID-19. The procession started at Santa Rosa Northwest Hospital and ended at Heritage Oaks Mortuary on W.W. White Road. First responders in 20 marked emergency vehicles took part in that ceremony. Anderson was a 16 year veteran with the Converse Fire Department. A funeral date has yet to be set. Some big news for unemployed Texans today. The Texas Workforce Commission has granted additional funds through the Lost Wage Program. Beginning on August 23rd, eligible Texans are going to be given an additional $300 in unemployment benefits per week. So who qualifies? According to Governor Greg Abbott, anyone who is eligible to receive more than $100 of certain state unemployment benefits qualify. Claimants could continue uh, requesting these payments as normal. If they qualify, they will see the extra benefits. Their first payment request on or after August 23rd. Payments will be backdated to the week ending August 1st. Well, that's a wrap for the first 2020 political convention with Joe Biden officially becoming the Democratic presidential nominee. As Nadia Romero explains, now this experiment in virtual democracy volleys to the right as the Republican National Convention gets ready to kick off its party in Charlotte on Monday. I accept this nomination for president of the United States of America. And with that, the Democratic National Convention came to a close. Four nights of speeches, performances, and heart-wrenching stories, all done without massive crowds, fanfare, or balloon drops. Now it's the Republicans' turn. Vice President Mike Pence already pushing back on statements made in Biden's acceptance speech about the Trump administration's response to COVID-19. The president keeps telling us the virus is going to disappear. He keeps waiting for a miracle. Well, I have news for him. No miracle is coming. I got a news flash for Joe Biden. We think there is a miracle around the corner. The coronavirus pandemic response will likely take center stage at the RNC. While this week the government's response was bashed, next week the ruling party will highlight it. We believe it's very likely that we'll have one or more vaccines for the coronavirus before the end of this year. All of that's a tribute to President Trump's leadership. Few speakers have been announced so far besides President Donald Trump, the Trump family, Pence, and three Trump supporters who made national news this year. Alice Johnson, a former federal inmate whose life sentence was commuted by Trump with the help of Kim Kardashian West, will also speak. President Trump made me having a wonderful life possible, and I'm just so thankful to him. That was Nadia Romero reporting in Washington. Postmaster General Louis DeJoy testifying on Capitol Hill today about criticism over policy changes thought to be brought on to slow the mail delivery down and slow down votes by mail this November. Today, DeJoy reassured U.S. lawmakers the U.S. Postal Service is, quote, fully capable and committed to delivering the nation's election mail securely and on time, end quote. DeJoy has been criticized for policy changes like removing high-speed sorting machines and collection boxes ahead of the election, something he says has now been suspended. President Trump's former chief strategist Steve Bannon responding to fraud charges related to border wall funding. On his podcast today, he called them a, quote, political hit job and said his arrest was a means to intimidate border wall supporters. Bannon is accused of accepting more than $25 million from donors based on a false pledge that all the money would be used to build the border wall. He has pleaded not guilty to the charges. 
Bannon, who left the White House in 2017, is now the sixth person associated with the Trump administration to face federal charges. Meantime, another investigation underway at Fort Hood. The U.S. Army now asking for help finding 23-year-old Sergeant Elder Fernandez. He was last heard from on Monday. He was reported missing by his family on Wednesday. They told police he was last seen by his staff sergeant who dropped him off at his home on Monday. At least eight Fort Hood soldiers have died since January. One of the most recent, 20-year-old Vanessa Vigueen, who disappeared in April. She was found dead in June. Last month, an independent review panel was formed to investigate Fort Hood's command culture and climate. A lot of sunshine locally, just the fair weather, patchy clouds moving overhead, and well, it's another hot day. Not excessively hot, but hot out there. 100 degrees, the high temperature so far reported at the airport. And we do have some shower activity far east of town. This is basically that 10% we were talking about yesterday. You get east of Hallettsville, just outside of Schulenburg and Hallettsville, you have some downpours. If you are in Lavaca County, you really have to be in far eastern Lavaca County to get in on that action. Temperature wise, we're by and large upper 90s right near 100, even uh, mix thermometer in Canyon Lake at 100 degrees along with Bandera, Maiko a degree shy along with Windcrest. So clearing sky this evening, just becoming warm and humid, a southeasterly breeze at 5 to 15. Tomorrow, we actually have a few chances for rain. We're thinking about a 20% chance in the morning with a little impulse of energy, and then a 30% chance as we get into the afternoon and still a hot day. Two systems in the tropics we're watching, one in particular could be affecting Texas. We're going to talk a lot about this coming right up. Thank you, Adam. Whether you drink them because you're on the go or you're trying to shake up your diet, smoothies can be a great source of nutrition. They're also pretty easy DIY. Up next, the secret to serving up the best blend in your next class. But first, this week marked the 100th anniversary of the ratification of the 19th Amendment, which gave women the right to vote. Today, three female pilots led a flyover in San Antonio in honor of 100 years of the women's suffrage movement. KSAT photojournalist Robert Samaron captured the historic moment above our city. This airfield was founded more than 100 years ago by women at a time when they didn't even have the right to vote. And they decided, we're just going to go ahead and do it anyway. Our female pilots are with the Women in Aviation at Alamo City chapter, as well as the 99s. Also honoring Katherine Stinson, she's a female pilot. And for all of us to be able to fly in this 100-year celebration of the women's right to vote has been quite an honor. Oh, I was excited. And it was an absolute yes right away. And around that same time that the suffragettes were challenging the government to get their right to vote, Amelia Earhart and other pilots were trying to make sure that they got their right to fly. We're looking at 100 years later, women really exemplifying their, what it means to come so far, really exemplifying what it means to progress. My parents were both military, so I used to uh, be in an unaccompanied minor back and forth, and at one time it was going across seas. There was a female pilot up there, and she was just spot on on how she introduced everything in the flight deck and introduced that this was a role that more women needed to fill, and it just sparked a fire in me. We want to make sure that people realize the fight that it took to get our right to vote and not squander it. When you don't show up to vote, someone's going to speak on your behalf. It's also monumental because we have a female vice president nominee for a major party ticket that is a woman of color that has immigrant parents and it really highlights the beauty of America. New at five, making the perfect smoothie. Smoothies are popular for a snack, even a light meal, and you can add all kinds of healthy stuff. But as 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz found out the secret to perfection is order. Lillian Montanez begins every day with a healthy homemade smoothie, and she has a system. I blend it the same way because I do like the consistency. Um, and then sometimes I find if I put them in the opposite way, 
it actually doesn't blend as well. Turns out the order in which you add ingredients helps your blender emulsify and work at peak performance. Layering really matters. You're gonna want to have liquid at the bottom because that creates a vortex that helps pull down all of the ingredients on top. To layer the right way, she says start with about one cup of liquid. Add your leafy greens and herbs on top of the liquids. Next, seeds or any nuts. And after that, soft foods like nut butters, yogurt or tofu, followed by your fresh fruits and veggies. For your top and final layer, you want heavier frozen fruits to push everything down. Think of it as like a flavorful ice. It's going to create body and oomph in your smoothie, but also flavor. Start the blender on low and increase the speed for at least a minute. Once everything is moving, add any powders or fiber. And for a frostier drink, add a few ice cubes at the end. If you're still not getting the smoothie you want, it could be your blender. Consumer Reports recommends this Vitamix Professional Series 750, but for less than half the price, they also like this Dash Chef Series Digital. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Take a live look outside with Sky 12 high over downtown San Antonio. There you can see the clouds casting a shadow on our fair city this evening. Meanwhile, Adam Kasky keeping a close eye on the tropics. Yeah, very close eye on the tropics. We could have a uh, historic moment as we get into next week. So that's going to be something we're watching carefully and historic just as in something that's never happened. Not necessarily a strong storm or two. So let's talk about our weather headlines. A shot at rain Saturday, both in the morning and then again in the afternoon. Slight chances, but it's better than nothing. Upper 90s, near 100 this weekend. Two tropical systems to talk about, so let's get right to that. Quiet across the state right now. We just have a few downpours and heavy rain showers in eastern Lavaca County. That's it across our area. So we're looking at the tropics here. We've got two systems. Tropical Storm Laura, still way out there. And then Tropical Depression 14. We're watching 14 most closely as this is the one that could really impact Texas as we get into next week. Honestly, we're surprised it's not already a tropical storm with the name Marco and even to quote the National Hurricane Center, their most recent dis discussion. It's a bit of a mystery why well, it's not a tropical storm yet, given the current conditions of it. Anyway, it's a weak system right now, but it's likely to strengthen a little bit as it makes its trek into the Gulf of Mexico. And right now the forecast makes it a category one hurricane. As we get into next week, look at Monday time frame, 1 p.m. Category one hurricane winds about 75 miles per hour and then maybe a tropical storm as it makes landfall anywhere. And I mean anywhere along the Texas or Louisiana coastline. The confidence with this forecast and this particular system is extremely low, not just very low, but extremely low for many reasons. So this could really end up anywhere along the Texas or Louisiana coastline. Here's a look at the computer models and look at the big divergence in our spaghetti plots. And I'm going to actually eliminate the biggest outliers. Let's get rid of them. Throw out the big outliers, okay? And this is still a 300 mile difference in these computer models. There's been a huge divergence just recently as they're having a hard time handling the weather patterns associated with the steering flow of this system. So in turn, just know that you're gonna to have to keep an eye on this for updates and we will keep you updated accordingly because it's just gonna keep changing. Should we make it a little more complicated here? <laughs> Let's throw in the uh, spaghetti plots of Laura. Look at this. Now you see why we call them spaghetti plots, huh? Right, because they can be all over the place. And th this is Laura over here. And then the other ones, of course, that I just showed you are uh, what will likely become Marco. All right, putting these two together in terms of the actual forecasted path, this is what could become historic. Next week, Monday, we could have, for the first time in weather records, we could have two hurricanes at the same time in the Gulf of Mexico. That has not happened in our recorded history. We've had two tropical cyclones, such as a tropical storm and a tropical depression. I think most recently uh, uh, 2002 for brief periods of time, but never two actual hurricanes. All right, 100 degrees right now. 
we're for the most part right around 100. It's going to be very similar through the weekend. I mentioned that 20% chance of rain tomorrow morning, so early risers. If you like that early morning bike ride, just double check the radar before you head out. And then in the afternoon, some pop up activity. And of course, next week's forecast is really going to hinge on the exact path of what's going to become Marco. So right now, 30% chance Tuesday, Wednesday. That could very easily change. This is a very fluid situation. Two hurricanes in the Gulf the same week. Same, same day, it's possible. Same and day, wow. possible. 2020. 2020. We yep. love you. <laughs> All right, uh, the Spurs played the lottery, but they did not win the lottery. Didn't get number one. Yeah. They're not going to pick 28, so right. somewhere in between, not too bad. When we come back, the Spurs will pick 11 at the NBA held their draft lottery last night, and the Cowboys are hoping C.D. Lamb goes out like a lion. Coming up. Our San Antonio Spurs who won the 11th position in the NBA draft following last night's lottery. This time around, the Silver and Black only had a 2% chance of landing the number one pick, and the odds won out this time. Unlike 1997, when the Spurs last participated, when they beat out favored Boston and grabbed the number one pick, and they used that to select Tim Duncan, of course. It's only the second time in the Greg Popovich era, and just the fourth time overall, the Spurs have participated in the lottery, formed back in 1985. 1987, winning the number one pick, they used that to select David Robinson, and then 1989, winning the third overall pick to grab up Sean Elliott. So you take a look at the draft picks, including this top five there for Minnesota. Minnesota on down to Cleveland. ESPN is reporting that Derek White just underwent surgery on the second toe of his left foot. There is no question one of the standouts of the Cowboys training camp is wide receiver C.D. Lamb, the rookie out of Oklahoma and Cowboys number one draft pick has impressed everybody from running back Ezekiel Elliott to quarterback Dak Prescott. His performance so far has prompted fellow wide receiver Amari Cooper to claim the Cowboys could have three 1,000 yard wide receivers or in this case a three headed monster and getting to play in Dak Prescott's football backyard is a bonus. It was actually like a surreal moment, just understanding that I play for the Cal Dallas Cowboys now. And uh, Dak Prescott actually texted me and asked me to come over and uh, work with him. But it was, you know what I'm saying, an unbelievable moment. Um, I took it all in and uh, I embraced it. I felt like that was my opportunity to show the guys just what I can do early on um, without pads on, just route running ability, just small techniques, and I can learn from them guys early. And look who made his first appearance on the field at the Dallas Cowboys training camp today, team owner Jerry Jones. One of the biggest assets for the Texans in the red zone last year was tight end Darren Fells. A six foot seven, 270 pound Fells was a favorite target of Deshaun Watson. In fact, Fells caught seven touchdowns in the red zone, tying with former wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins for the most. A former European basketball player who is about to start his seventh season in the NFL after signing a two year, $7 million contract to stay with the Texans. Still surreal. I mean, one more year and I've actually played football longer than I've played basketball in college and professional combined. Um, so that, that right there answers your question that it is it's still surreal that I can be playing at a high level for so long. And like you said, as old as I am, I guess. <laughs> playing a little bit later in life in football and Conference USA just announcing they're canceling all fall sports except football. So UTSA football game on. For now. For now. Thanks, Greg. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. So tomorrow we do have slight chances of rain, some spotty showers possible both in the morning around sunrise and then again in the afternoon when it's the hottest part of the day. 98 for high temperatures all weekend long. And then next week, a lot of uncertainty. That's all around the tropical system. An update at 6. Thanks, Adam, and thank you for watching the news at 5.